Hey YouTube, this is Praxis Prepper. I say that revenge is a dish best served cold, and I say why not just take that to the next level and serve it as a delicious frozen dairy-based dessert. Revenge is an interesting and difficult topic to, to discuss, so why don't we start with the definition. Miriam Webster's, what are you doing? How do you, how do you like that? How's that feel? Anyway. Merriam-Webster's Dictionary, which is the wonderful book that also contains the words za and ain't. Ain't isn't even, what do you? I told you not, how about poo? How about poo? How did that feel? You touch this again, I'm gonna have brain freeze from a for a week, I'm gonna take so much of your ice cream. Anyway, the definition of revenge in the, don't you touch that gummy bear. Don't you touch that gummy bear. The topic for today is revenge and its place in a WRL or WROL. I can never say that raw. W-R-O-L. It's a tongue twister. But anyway, I want to emphasize this. This is revenge in a without rule of law environment. Not today. Most types of revenge today are illegal and they'll get you in jail. So we're talking about specifically revenge in a post-collapse W-R-O-L environment where people are trying to create some sort of sense of order uh, out of the chaos. Uh, there are two different ways, I think, of looking at revenge. One is just sort of that cathartic, knee-jerk, reactionary kind of, you know, someone punches you, you want to punch them back. It feels good. And I get that. It's just part of our simian brain that's still simmering back there. But it doesn't usually give us results that are particularly useful to us. Uh, the other uh, aspect to revenge is the one I want to talk mostly about uh, now, and that is the aspect of revenge where if someone does something to you and you have a response, it might make them less likely to mess with you again in the future. And that's the key, is the point of the revenge is to make things less dangerous for you in the future. If you are working and operating on the emotional level at the that we mentioned at the beginning, that almost always... Okay, it always leads to just tornadoes of escalating violence. And you see that in the world today. All the major conflicts are just, you know, this group did this to this group, so that group did this response, and it just goes back and forth and back and forth. It starts with some person, like, getting bumped on an elevator and quickly escalates to, you know, people getting killed. That's a bit of an exaggeration. Yeah, maybe not, though. I bet that's happened. Uh... So it's the, the emotional response that's the dangerous response. And that's what I wanted to focus on, is how we can use our logical mind to make things better for people in a post-collapse world, while using the concept of revenge to try to get things back towards that sort of track of control. You just have to look in the world today to see all of this operating. And one of the things you can do uh, to look uh, towards places in the world where the threat of violence is used as a way of de-escalating things is in the animal kingdom. Animals are great at avoiding violence. I mean, I know that nature's red and tooth and claw and all that kind of stuff, but nature, whenever possible, avoids unnecessary conflict. Pretty much the only time that things are killing each other in nature is because they're hungry and they want to eat something. Uh, there's not all this wasted energy like humans do in, in most of the natural world. And a great example of that is silverback gorillas. Now, nobody's going to look at a silverback gorilla and be like, pansy. Those wimpy little silverback gorillas, like, you know, they're always looking to avoid a fight. Uh, but silverback gorillas, you know, notorious for, like, the chest thumping and, and charging and all that, they do the charge and they do the chest thumping to avoid actual violence. Uh, if they feel that uh, someone has become a, or someone meaning another gorilla, his, or a person, I suppose, uh, has become a threat to their group, they'll do the charge, they'll do the chest thumping, and that is in lieu of actual conflict, actual fighting. Uh, that is what we should be looking to achieve with any kind of a revenge response. And the key to the revenge response is that the reason it's being enacted is because after having been attacked by a group, we realize that group could be a threat to us, and we want to reduce the chance of that threat manifesting itself again in the future. 
you know, we're letting the past go. What happened, happened. We're thinking about tomorrow now, and we want to make sure they know that there's going to be a problem if they, uh, if they try to further mess with us. I think that the, the silverback gorilla example is a good one. If you can uh, demonstrate to another group that there is hell to pay if they mess with you, then, then there's going to be a, a reduced chance that they will choose you as their, as their target in the future. Because what you want to be going on in the other group's mind is you want it to be a logical process of, of thinking. They, they need something. They need food. They need this. They need that. They're looking to you as a potential source of that. And if they can make the calculation, the logical calculation, that if we try to take X from this group, it's going to create so much more problems for us that it'll be, you know, it would make more sense that we didn't do it, then they'll choose not to do it. But if it becomes an emotional question, then, you know, all that's out, out the window. Uh, and what makes it emotional is when people get hurt and when family members in that other group get hurt. So if something is done to your group and you retaliate, you create you know, some kind of revenge and uh, you harm people in the other group, that's when it just keeps escalating, getting bigger and bigger. It may feel good, it may be fair, but is it good for anybody? Does it make tomorrow any better than, than it could be otherwise? And I'd say no. You know, I would say that the adult response is to let the past be the past, worry about the future, let people know what's, what the deal is going to be uh, you know, through that show of force that doesn't involve creating emo an emotional response in the other group. But um, I would say that is the way to go about it for a better future. Now, for most people in the group, that's what everyone wants is stability. They want uh, some sense of safety and order. And you're not going to get that with blood vendettas. And again, they may feel fair, they may feel justified, but what's really important, I think, is what's, what's going to make for a better tomorrow. And what makes for a better tomorrow is a de-escalation of violence, and revenge almost always leads to an escalation. So if there is going to be some kind of a response, I think it's important not to think of it as revenge, but as a demonstration. Of, of your capabilities, a demonstration of force, in the same way that the silverback gorilla does that. And that may be difficult. It may take um, a lot of emotional strength, I think, to, to abstain from that kind of uh, you know, knee-jerk response. But I think it leads to better outcomes for everybody. So what do you think about that? Do you think that's, like, do you think that's a cop-out? Do you think that's dangerous? Do you think that the best way to deal with every situation is to you know, have an eye for an eye? kind of mentality uh, going out there. I would argue that you just look at the world today and if you think that everything's going great, then I, since eye for an eye seems to be the way that people are operating now, these are the kind of results that you can expect. Um, I would suggest that if people uh, were able to get past that a little bit, uh, maybe they could make a better world. Someone, make, someone's got to put libtard in the, in the comments here. <laughs> this is getting really like, oh, kumbaya, you know. But uh, I think it's practical. Uh, you know, more than anything else. Uh, I just think it's, it's uh, the important thing is what, what's going to be better for your group, your people, that are still alive, that didn't get killed in whatever kind of attack that you're trying to do vengeance, vengeance for or whatever. What's going to be better for them? Because ultimately, every decision that we make has ramifications, and we may not uh, like to think about those. We might want to just focus on, well, we're just going to be doing this uh, this revenge attack and it's only going to harm people that are outside of our group but you know let's grow up and be honest we know we know the way these things go and uh, what's going to get you the best results maybe an attack of some sort would be a wise choice it's a hard decision to make at this point isn't it <laughs> I guess it's easier for Christians I'm not personally a Christian uh, I mean I'm down with a lot of what JC said uh, but I, I don't consider myself a Christian, but uh, for Christians, I suppose it would be a pretty easy call because if someone hits you on one cheek, you offer them the other. So that's kind of that's pretty straightforward. I guess there's solace in that. Maybe that's a, that, maybe that's usually the right decision to make. I don't know. Oftentimes it would be worked for Gandhi. Gandhi definitely like he leveraged the shit out of that one, and it worked eventually. Not without loss though. Not without loss. That's it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video.